opportunity to maybe make some plays. And then there's going to be great competition to make the roster. You know, for Isaiah Thomas, a draft pick of the Cleveland Browns, a guy that a lot of people like. That's going to be a fight to make this roster. And then on the inside, you've got Brian, you've got Elliott, you've got Tommy Togiai, Perion, and you have got Sheldon Day, the veteran there. Your linebackers, Walker, J.O.K., Jacob Phillips, Taki Taki. Love that top quartet right there. And then you go to the back end of your defense, and you're loaded. Newsom. You've got Greedy Williams. You've got, of course, Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson, A.J. Green. Now, and then at the safety room, you're bringing back your top three safeties from a year ago in Grant Delpit, John Johnson, Ronnie Harrison, plus Rich LeCount is back. This is a stacked defensive unit for the Cleveland Browns, and I'll tell you this. I talked to a couple of the coaches on the defense side of the ball. They are pumped about Martin Emerson. Pumped. They there think he is going – he is – they said he has taken to what they've taught him, techniques, beautifully, beautifully. They're very excited. You have you have inroads with some of the people in those rooms. I, we know, to we, the point to where – We. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, quest, I, maybe the quest has just – Diverted. Veered. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. We'll see who ends up winning. Uh, this is That's some right. breaking news. Um, at BGSU Peepaw now following us. On Twitter, uh, here are a few of the tweets, the initial tweets from uh, at BGSU Peepaw. Gosh, uh, I love this I'm guy. I'm Twittering. Uh, Pitts puke sucks. <laughs> I'm Twittering. <laughs> Go Browns. Uh, this is how it is described as, uh, by the way, I love how excited you were. You go, oh, I love this guy. You didn't even see, hadn't even seen it yet, the brilliance. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the, um, the Twitter bio. Master studio designer, true. Registered lurker. I've got no doubt. I've had a good run. Yes. At my age, most days start with a bad poll. Listen up. Peepaw will give you the real truth. <laughs> he, I don't even know if he's getting here. People All are all of that. People this are very amazing. Upset. People are upset about our lack of audio, but they should be thrilled with it. Well, this. now the stream's up and running. So we've got the audio. Drew came in sure. and fixed it. Actually, uh, we just decided we were just going to crash the entire system and reboot it. Oh, and that's what go. we did because well, everything looked fine from this side. I'm following him. That BGSU Where is he? Peepaw. BGSU Peepaw? Yep. I'm following this guy. Blocked. Blocked. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. How does he spell You'll have Peepaw? a voice. P E P A W. Mm. This is great. Automatic follow. This guy gets it, gets the show. He's Twittering. Peepaw. Yes. Follow. Pitts puke sucks. Follow back. Sold. I love this one. Autocorrect can sock it too. Yes. <laughs> fantastic. So great. This guy's good. Oh. What's his picture? Fantastic. There are some who call me Gibe. Yes. Beautiful. From Monty Python on the quest for the Holy Grail. Love it. This is tremendous stuff. Peepaw. Pappy Van Pappy Van Gibe. Peepaw Gibe. All of it. Just it all great. wins. It's it all, all wins. wins. Nobody gets hurt. That's right. Um, all right. Coming up next, where else do we need to address things in the offseason? ZK kind of give you a little preview. In terms of on the defensive front, we will get to that. Uh, we will uh, have the 10 most impactful trades of the 2022 offseason. We will have a little fun with that. Go around the sports world as well. The Voice is going to join us at 2 o'clock, the great Jim yes. Donovan. Um, we'll ask him if his horses watched the Preakness and if they enjoyed it. A little bit of higher, lower, better, or worse as well. We're off and running on a Monday edition of Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Whether you're buying a seller or a home with Howard Hanna Real Estate Services, they're always going to have you covered with a winning strategy. So if you plan to move this season, they'll take care of you. At Howard Hanna, every day is game day. Visit howardhanna.com slash go Browns today. I contend that this is one of the worst weeks of the year to work. Right Why now. is that? I'm happy to if be you're here the, with you. If you're the smart ones, the smart ones will turn this into a four day, three day, four day weekend. This was the savvy people. We are. That. We are. No, I know. So okay. I said the smart ones. Yeah. Duh. Um, us. Hashtag us. But if you don't, you're kind of just everyone sees Memorial Day. You know what's coming. Official start of summer. Away we go. Everyone's excited about it. But you got to get through these days. Yeah. And these days suck. Well, I'm happy for us, though. At least we get OTA start. So, like, we're actually going to yeah, get a Yeah, so we'll have a little look something. At, look at the squad. We've got media on Wednesday. So we've got a little something to get us there. Remember, we just have four. Just four days, and we're already and once we and Wednesday's thirty minutes. Wednesday's out, the big of, availability day. Yeah, that's so right. Wednesday, oh boy! You know, well, I just meant for humans in general, not just us here on the oh, show. Oh no, we had to do a little talk through this morning. But like, in terms okay, of come on, in terms of the other humans, uh, you know, the people that are out there in the workforce. Yeah, it's br- like I see it with my kids. Like they, this is brutal week for them. Brutal, and they got to fake it for the rest of this week. Four days next, and then three days the week after. See, like, like it never ends. The problem week. is they went, that went, went. but that like, sucks though. What are they doing this week? Nothing. There's no uh, finals. It's all that stuff's done. My nephew Brunswick's done on Friday for the summer. That's right. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah, because nothing's going to get done this day, week anyways. And you're out. Why are you bring you bringing kids back after Memorial Day? Yeah. What are we doing? No good, man. Absolutely no good. So do you do you su- propose that? that everything stops prior to Memorial Day, that that just is the end of it? No, I think Friday, Friday, it, any sort of schooling or whatever should stop the Friday before Memorial Day. Yeah. And then you should go back. And you have like a week of camp school where you do fun stuff. Well, whatever. Like if you need a babysitter, then they can do do babysitter stuff, whatever. Yeah. But like the schooling, that's it. Yeah. No more requirement My after the Friday. My kids have some tests this week. I think they're All mine were re- done last. They they have t- so then what are they still there for? You tell me, brother. I don't like that. No, it's ridiculous. They have, at, at, like, they have tests this week to wrap it up, uh, and then they are, next week is all fun stuff. So they're doing, like, like for the eighth graders, the Cedar Point Day next week. They're doing, and they're right. doing all kinds field of trips, field trips, soapbox, derbies, blah, totally. blah, blah, blah. Great. Yeah, okay. That's right. That's Let's right. waste some time. Fine. But, like, the real schooling, it's got to be done. Wrap it up. There's no reason to keep coming back. Like, if a yeah. kid doesn't want to go, fine. Fine. Nobody cares. It's over. Sure. Um, so there you go. Um, and I, I feel the same way about when they go back. They should go back like the week of Labor Days, short week, Labor Day, and then away you go. And then away you go. Go like the Wednesday Acclimate, before. You're calling it an acclimation yeah, period. For sure. sure. That's what I used to do. That's you started what, Tuesday or do. Wednesday of la- going into Labor Day. That's right. You had two or three, three days, days, a little orientation. Here's sure. your teachers. This is what's going to be expected nice of you. Nice long weekend. Now go away for the weekend and come back ready to go on Tuesday. That's it. That's how you do it. Well, I don't here's know why here's how that. you do this weekend. Ryan J. just text, uh, tweeted us, how's this for a Memorial Day action? Flying out Sunday for three rounds of golf. Spyglass, Spanish Bay, Pebble Beach. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. When's he flying? When do you say he's flying? This weekend. Pretty well, will your clubs make it there? That's good. the first question. They got clubs there. If you're going to play Pebble Beach – and spot you're bringing your clubs. No, I'm just saying, like if something clubs. happened and his couldn't make it, they well, got clubs. It's the airline. Yeah, I'm they got told clubs. though the Prepare, way to do it. Expect the worst. Here's what I'm told. I'm told the way to do it now is to uh, you send them ahead of time. You send them with the like on the on the FedEx. Yeah. Uh, what's the golf club? I've done that before. I've sent yeah. my clubs to Florida. What is that? What does that set you back, Gibby? Ballpark. It, it can be a little pricey. Okay. But. You're guaranteed to get him. So and he's you can send be, him right to the course. He's going to be looking at lows in the high 40s and highs around low 60s. So this is quarter zips. Season. This is quarter zips and pants. You can go quarter zips and shorts, but it's definitely quarter zip on top. It's going to be no in the doubt. 50s. And honestly, you're going to get a little ocean mist. If there's any sort of wind, you're going to get an ocean mist. I might be in a pant. All right. That I got to run something. Let me run something by you. That's right pebble, now. though, man. Like, that's what it is. Okay. Key it yesterday. Okay. Sandbagger. Yeah. Two handicap. The key it. <laughs> I'm not sh- I think, is this the Grayson maybe? Grayson? Yeah, Grayson. It's what uh, J- Justin Thomas wears. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the- you remember what happened? With? 
Thomas, why he's not with Polo. No. Remember he made the derogatory comment caught on the mic while he was playing? Oh, uh, that he didn't like what so was po- happening with something? Yeah, insensitive. And so Polo bounced him. He'd been Polo his whole life. And okay. so then he – this was just announced in, like, March that he's okay. with this company, Grayson, which was designed by a guy who was at Ralph Lauren for a long time. Okay, and the kid was very well connected, knows one of the investors, early investors in it. Okay. So he shows up on the course yesterday, given the conditions you were describing, yeah. Pebble Beach, like – in a Grayson golf hoodie with a little wolf on it. Yeah, sure. It was awesome. Sims and I both agree his best looking golf fit of his career by far. And in fact, we have decided that he can only play golf in these hoodies for the rest <laughs> of time. And in the summer, we just need to get him some sleeveless hoodies to play in. But it was awesome. I was like, I'm in on that. Yeah, I'm in. Like you combine your shorts over there with one of these things. And, and I, now you're set. You're winning. You're you're playing at a level that other people are just not going to be able to comprehend, really. I don't. I I, I, I So I saw him wearing this stuff, and I, I went on their site, and I was curious about their stuff. It's a pretty eclectic mix of things. I do think that they blew the collar on it. The collar on Justin Thomas's polo that it, that ain't flying, brother. Too much that, color it for was, you? Wi- no, it was wide open. Yeah. It the the collar didn't hold firm. Yeah. It was flapping. Yes. Yeah, you can't you can't be like that. No flap. On, if you're gonna have a polo, I mean, you gotta have a you gotta have a collar. And it was it gave, it was a kind of a was not a strong look, I think they're I I got I got to see this hoodie though. I'm trying to find it. I'm I love the idea of a golf hoodie. I like what that it is. was that Peter Millar one I have is one of those. That's one of those golf hoodies. It was that I, like. I it wore was that a the other day. Stunning number. I was really yeah. I strong. Said, you got something really going on here. Yeah, somebody very proud of. And I th- I like the fact they're leaning into wolves. I think you put yeah. a wolf on thing. That's a win. A wolf thing is great. You got all the pack stuff you can play into. Totally. That's nice. It, there's no doubt. Do you remember a day when the only like that stuff there was was like Polo, Lacoste, and Tommy Hilfiger? Oh yeah. And now there's about ten million. Yeah. Of those. It looks to me like it was the the bleaker hoodie. Is what it, it looks like on here. But he had a two tone going on something with it. Could have been ownership special. Could have been because I don't see it on the website. But it was it was stunning. By the way, these are. You'll pay for them. These are not gonna come cheap. No, no. unless you're the kid. That's the key. And you're a two handicap and you're an influencer. Hey, listen, we co- we got him. Sims and I undefeated on the year. Now, if I had put, I, I think that whoever, I think the kid and I could have done some damage yesterday as well. Of course. He's a key. Uh, do you see us, uh, do you see us uh, chasing our wide receiver? Josina mentioning Will Fuller. You and I have talked about him for a long, long time. You know, we've talked about it. And, and quite frankly, the fact that it has not happened leads me to believe that it is unlikely to happen. Uh, I it don't could know. honestly be something that waits too. Like it could, could be see. something that waits. Now, it, it could be. Look, go. oh, here's a guess the stats for you, because he's good, right? Will Fuller has been a very good, productive receiver in the league uh, when he's been on the field. Yeah. yeah I'm so I right, think, me, like, do I? Th- either one. Of you. What do you think is his his best season? I'll say 785. Okay. How many times do you think he's been over 600? How many times is he? How many years is in his career? One, two, three, four, five, six seasons in the league. How many times has he had more than 700 yards receiving? Four. Twice. One. 2020, 879 yards, eight touchdowns. How many times has he appeared? So that's with Deshaun. How many times has he appeared in 12 games? Oof. In six seasons? One. One. His rookie year played 14 games. Since then, 10, 7, 11, 11. I think the reason we talk about him is because he does possess a, a history traits. with Deshaun and elite traits. So those two things are why we talk about him, and it feels like what we're missing. And if it, to me, I don't think we're complete at receiver based on what I saw from Anthony Schwartz last year. Like, well, he, yeah, he needs may to take a big. He's got to take a big leap, and you need. I think you need that. I, you know, I do. I think we got to have a guy who can make safeties play on their heels a little bit. And again, the fact that Will Fuller is nowhere in the league right now doesn't mean there is an interest in them, but I think it is some wait and see. And so from the Browns standpoint, right, you have an opportunity to take a little bit of a wait and see on Anthony Schwartz. Is Anthony Schwartz becoming that guy? Can undrafted free agent Isaiah Weston become a vertical threat in the NFL? That's what you're waiting to see, I think, before you were to go ahead and make a move onto somebody like Will Fuller, who has been very productive. Look, Last three years, every year with Deshaun Watson, for the three seasons with Deshaun Watson, he's gotten, he averages over 10 yards a target. So 
that's efficient. That's what we go back to. And he has, as we've said, that vertical skill set. He has at least a 50-yard reception every year that he's been in the league, except for last year with the Dolphins, which really didn't count. I mean, he really did not play football for the Dolphins. So I think that I could see it. I don't think there's any rush to it. And I think the Browns' preference would be to have one of these guys step up. So it sounds like, listening to you now, that from your vantage point, our team is on the field. I feel like we are pretty much there right now. Pretty much there. Yeah. Yes. So we're Norman Dale. That's what they wanted to be. And, and I've talked to Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry about it. Their desire was to have this team that they hope to take into week one. You know, and look, knock on wood, that everybody stays healthy between now and then. But th that team is here for the mandatory minicamp. So if there were to be more moves or a splash move, where there be a Fuller or an Indomitian Sue or, you know, T.Y. Hilton's getting some interest around the league, Deshaun Jackson, guys who fit that kind of vertical mold that would be one-year deals, you know, I think that would happen prior. With the receiver position, though, more in, in isolation, I think that Anthony Schwartz will be given every opportunity to be the guy that they drafted him to be before they decided they need to make a move this year. This from uh, Jeff Chahid of, of NFL.com. Ten most impactful trades of the 2022 offseason. Uh, two of ours on there. In fact, ours come in at number 10 with Amari and number one with Deshaun Watson on that list, as it would be. Yeah, I mean, Pretty I impactful. think it, you'd go it and you'd – number one's either Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson, right? I'm, I'm guessing that has to be number two on the list. The Amari Cooper one, though, is one that has really flown under the radar, I think, around the league. And frankly, from the way that the Browns were able to structure the deal once they acquired him looks tremendous in terms of the compensation that was given up, the compensation that will be paid out relative to everybody else. And now I think for the Browns, he is somebody that you're going to count on to have a monster season in that kind of you know high volume role. Uh, in that Adam Thielen-ish role, and that's what I have to say. We're trying to find who's going to play Stephon Diggs for us. And, you know, Donovan Peoples-Jones is a guy that continues to impress me. I know he continues to impress our coaching staff, and he's somebody that, you know, people I think could be sleeping on a little bit. And, and with improved quarterback play and another year in the league, maybe maybe Donovan Peoples-Jones that guy. I mean, can't take away from the fact that the guy's averaged over 17 yards catch for his career. So he knows how to make big plays. Like, that doesn't happen by accident in the NFL, back-to-back -back seasons where you're putting he's up He's just good, not that burner. He's not a burner, but he know he can he's make a good separator. He makes separator effective plays and good use of body. Um, just an update for you on at BGSU Peepaw. Oh, that was a great now, one. now Jade Jade is in the mix. The lovely Jade McRae, who, by the way, good job out of Dave in Australia yes. showing the video of her on some sort of so a, talented Australia's Got Talent or something like that. So where talented. she was a judge, mind you, a judge. That's right, a judge. Stunning, uh, stunning throwback. Uh, she she tweets uh, at Peepaw. Uh, what's up, old man? And this is so Gibbe. The sky. Next question. <laughs> Peepa. He is a spirit animal. 35 minutes into Cleveland Browns Daily, and we're 34 minutes overdue for a shameless BPA plug. Yeah, he ain't wrong. He's crushing it. He ain't wrong. Crushing it early I want to know who this is. I'm excited. If it's somebody. I have no idea. We I have a him. list. That, Bo and I have a list Gibby of candidates. We have. You blocked him? Yeah. On I the have, Browns Daily account. Oh for real? Oh, my God. That's yeah. Shameful. Shameful. Don't worry, people. We'll Get take off my care lawn. of you. We'll take Jeez. care of you. Jeez. The block, not even the You mute. know what's so funny is that Gibby and I had like a lovely morning together. We had a bunch of meetings on Monday, and then yeah. we hung <laughs> yes, out. Yes, we do. We hung out. We, uh, we uh, went through the Building the Browns, which was – there's I think there's quite a bit to talk about from that Building the Browns. Yeah. Uh, and – and we've been hanging out, having like the nicest morning. And then we get in here on the show, and like he attacks me within five seconds. Come right out of you. nowhere. It's right on you. And I think I had gone above and beyond with the call in. You've you done did. a lot. You did a lot you of did. nice things. I, I fully admit that. I just like to poke the bear on a There's Monday. No doubt. Uh, by no the doubt. way, the top trades, if you're going through, Watson was number one. Yep. Uh, number two was Russell Wilson. Number three was Tyreek Hill. Yep. Number four, Khalil Mack. Number five, Devontae Adams. I was going to say, Devontae, low. That felt Devontae low. Adams is too low. I think he's a bigger deal, honestly, I think he's a bigger than Tyreek Hill. Tyree Hill. Same. Number six was Matt Ryan. Because it, when you're having this conversation, what you're having the conversation of, did this trade change the trajectory of this franchise? Yeah, you so can get Tyreek Hill, but you don't have a quarterback. Right. So, to me, Adams would be third on this list. Yep. And I think, and quite candidly, because of the uncertainty – Watson, I'm, Watson, Wilson ought to be inverted based on where we are right now. 
Now, when it's all said and done, you feel differently. But where it is right now, Watson's, you know, Wilson's going to play week one. We don't know what's going to happen. We're, the, we're all waiting on, on what's going to happen with Deshaun. So Matt Ryan was sixth. A.J. Brown was seventh. Carson Wentz, eighth. Ugh. Marquise Brown, number nine. And number 10 is Amari Cooper. Here's the thing, too, about the Tyreek Hill and the Devontae Adams trade. The guy who has the most receiving yards in the NFL over the last six seasons still plays in Kansas City. Correct. That's right. Number two on that list no longer plays for the Green Bay Packers, and there isn't anybody there with any kind of a track record to replace him. Like, Mahomes still has Travis Kelsey. He br- they brought in Juju Smith-Schuster. Mm-hmm. They have a burner in Scantling. So they have... Kelsey's the leading receiver in the NFL over the last six years. Travis Kelsey, a tight end. Yeah. He's still there. The Chiefs' offense is still going to be formidable. Now, because of Aaron Rodgers' greatness, you believe that the Packers' offense will still be explosive, but it's a lot more unproven in the wide receiver department. The beautiful Miss Kay. It's a lot yeah, more improving in the wide receiver department than that of the Kansas City Chiefs' pass catching core. So Correct. I think that that trade impacts the Raiders positively. And has a much bigger negative impact on the Packers in, than the Tyree Kill does. Of course, losing Tyree Kill is going to hurt them. No doubt. Yeah. Electric and almost a perfect complement with Kelsey. But they still have a lot of the guys, Mahomes and Kelsey, that make it go. Like, they still have a clear number one. They don't have that in Green Bay. No. No, they do not. Uh, we'll go around the NFL world coming up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Hey friends, the Bath Authority, my good friends, they'll give you the bathroom of your dreams. They can do it for you in about a day. You can take that current bathroom of yours. It's a little bit stuffy, a little outdated. Turn it into a custom bath that'll feel like a spa experience. Let the Bath Authority make it a reality for you at a fraction of the cost of the competitors. They have the largest selection of bath projects. They're all made in the United States. You can change your bathroom from outdated to outstanding. Uh, If you need to do a tub to shower conversion, they're all over that. Superior products, expert installers. Give them a call now for 500 bucks off your next custom bath or shower remodel. That number is 216-220-8399 or go to thebathauthority.com. Again, 500 bucks off right now at 216-220-8399. The Bath Authority, where affordability meets quality. Kyler Murray not reporting to OTAs out in Arizona, uh, but also I saw that they're going to be the mid-season hard knocks. The That's in-season happening. hard knocks. Did you watch yes. a second of it last year? The in-season hard knocks? I didn't watch it. I believe it was second. the Colts. No, the Colts. I was quite I busy in the season. Yeah, I didn't. And I'll be even busier this year. So, no, I do not plan on watching no, any just, of it. No, I think it's – I think you – I don't know. I In the hard knocks pre-training camp thing, it works if the team's into it. The team has to be willing to help you. And give you the right guys. And give you the right guys, which like we if, didn't do with no. the full doors. Um, no, and and the, we knew it. You know, in here, we knew the, how, how things were going. Um, and I remember you – didn't we talk about it? Didn't we break down the episodes and we're – yeah. That's what I thought. And we were like, well, this isn't – these humans oh, and unfortunately, are not they picked guys that were not going to make the team when they did the no. Browns one. And had and very little chance of making the team. Very, to none. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So um, that's yeah. a tricky thing. You need some participation from the team. You need some participation from the stars. I think yes. that's what makes it interesting. I thought the Cowboys one gave you that yeah. completely, which yeah. I thought made it very compelling. Uh, last year and so hopefully this will be a good hard knocks this who year. is it this year on the actual hard knocks? isn't it the lions lions oh, bite kneecaps yeah it's gonna be great yeah that should be great that should be very entertaining that should be great um by the way peepaw and i quote if i were the producer of friends jordan clooney would george clooney would be a guest star on every episode <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what the, i don't know it. what the numbers say there peepaw about my the one that I was the most heavily featured on feels like it was the biggest. I one have of the year. I have given you due credit. Thank you for thank you. Um, it's not the it might be number two highest performing ever you know? or just this season. This season. What's Easy higher? Easy there, Tiger. What's higher? Schedule release. There you go. Schedule release, huh? That's interesting. Is this on the CBD feed or is this on the BPA feed? This is BPA. The BPA doubles. It's on the BPA. Oh, comes oh, oh, oh here it comes. CBD. Yeah, that's right. The, BP, the BPA launches into our feed? Yes. Yeah, it's on the Cleveland Browns Daily and more. Yeah. It also has its own <laughs> wow. legs to stand on. Wow. Well, you had to develop it a little bit before wow. it got its own feeling. Yeah, we gotta, we'll got carry I it along. I might have that wrong, Zagura. You might be number one. I'm looking. Yeah, you're, you're the surprise of no, 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 no. I, 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 here we go. Schedule 12K. Oh wait, then I definitely have get you definitely have that one wrong. I've got a wide receiver room, seventeen. That's right. Okay, there you go. So I had it backwards. I hey, I hey, admit. listen. A lot of people would love to have twelve thousand, twelve k. Yeah, yeah, it'd be huge. You'd kill for it. It'd be unprecedented. You know, you're trying to launch things. Like you want to have a nice worth. twelve or seventeen. That's a nice, it's a big launch. number. It's a big, big number when you're trying to get things. By the done. way, meet the rookies. Twenty two already. There you go. Sitting on my DVR. I'll get to it. Uh, Debo Please also do. not reporting. Um, what is uh, how does Pedro feel about this? Pedro just wants to know who's playing quarterback for them, and Pedro. What is going on he, with that? He's not sure. He then he tells me some people are saying good stuff about Lance. He, Pedro's a little bit on the fence with everything going on with the Niners. I'll call him today. I'll have a report for tomorrow. Since we won't book him, he's not getting booked. No, 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 no bookings. No, no. we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll I'll talk to him and I'll report. It's early. Like, it is early. I don't. Uh, no news right now from the NFC West. By the way, speaking of news from the AFC East, Albert Breer saying that Patriots head coach Bill Belichick could end up calling offensive plays in 2022. Well, that's really? a recipe for disaster. Is it? Does he chase this too long? I don't know, but even then his son was saying he doesn't know if he's a defensive coordinator this year. And kind of I gave just like wonder, a, a like terse does, interview about that. Does does he? Do you stay past the expiration date a little bit? I think. Okay. 
he wants to win one without Tom, and then he can Clearly. piece. I just don't think it's going to happen. No. I mean, Mac Jones is going. No, that's what I'm saying. You can chase this forever. Tom's won. He won. Done. It's over. He's retired. Okay? He's unretired. Right. He could win another one. He's already won one. You, you're not anytime soon. Knowing, knowing, knowing the fact that Tom Brady money was never going to be an issue. If Tom Brady does not win a championship this year, should he have Elwayed and walked out, stumbled out after that boat parade and that title and just been like, I left New England. I won a title piece. Mike drop nowhere to go but down from there. Right. Sure. Should he have done that? Yeah. Sure. But that's, you know, that's the thing that we do as fans where we want Jordan to leave on the shot, on the push off on Byron Russell, like we want him to leave. Was. He was right here right now. He would – he would. you'd need give A to be betwixt, good. betwixt you and Jordan. That's for darn sure. Pretty good push-off. <laughs> it was a um, nice push-off. But, by the way, I, I'm glad they didn't call it on him. I mean, I don't think Jordan Same. should have been called for that. Same. But we want – we don't want him walking around with the Wizards, right? Correct. But the reality is is that these guys want to play until they can't in some instances, until they're pulled off the field or court, they want to continue to play. That's the reason Tiger Woods is playing in majors – with a, a leg that makes it difficult for him to walk, and he's trying to play majors, and he's doing it. And he did it a little more than a year after the accident happened because this is what defines him. Yes. So, yeah, we would want them. Like what you would want your last image of Tiger Woods competitive golf would be winning the Masters. And then we'll see on down the road. Sure. Like, and sure. same thing. You don't want to see John Joe Montana in a, in a Chiefs uniform. Of course not. You want him to play out in San Francisco. We'll see on down the road. That's what we want. I would have wanted Joe Montana to go to the Chiefs, win that Super Bowl, and then peace out. Wouldn't you have rather him just stayed in San Francisco? Well, of course. Won the Super Bowl and peace yeah, out? That, that, right. cr that crud Steve Young. Yeah. So that's what you want is, you know. But he's got a chance. I mean, the NFC, it's there this year for them. Yeah. So we'll ask uh, the great uh, Jim Donovan about that. The, uh, the voice will join Man. us here momentarily. We'll talk about a uh, little preview of OTAs. We'll ask him the, this question about the Belichick-Brady stuff. Always good talking to Jim. We will do so coming up next. Before we do that, though, tickets for all Cleveland Browns home games are now on sale. For more information, visit clevelandbrowns.com, and they will take care of you. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Elk and Elk Serious Lawyers, Serious Injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO for a free case review. Elk and Elk is a proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. And we head out on the hotline for a visit with our good buddy, the voice of the Cleveland Browns, the great Jim Donovan. Uh, and as customary, we like to know how the ponies are, what's going on on the Ponderosa, my friend. Hello, guys. Uh, well, uh, we had a great weekend. We all watched the Preakness together. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> today was spent uh, taking inventory, uh, hay inventory. It's that time of the year, Bo. It's, sure. Uh, how much first cutting do we need? How much second cutting do we need? Uh, so I was up in the, in the hayloft. We have a huge hayloft. And, um, you know, it's it's down a little bit, but soon it will be filled. So. That's kind of what's going on. But everybody's good. Thanks for asking. Were they inspired by the Preakness of early voting's run? <laughs> Were they so. out frisky, said, hey, running around? Yeah, I was, saying, I was saying to myself and to them, too, in an emotional pitch to them, hey, could you make Daddy some money? Is anyone <laughs> that, that they could be pretty quick here? <laughs> Those guys are a <laughs> drain. That's right. Can you give, not just take? Let's have a, a give-and-take relationship. <laughs> They're here. a drain Absolutely. on the money as opposed to the filling it back up. Yeah, that's typically how that goes. Uh, we were having a fun conversation. We, we stumbled upon it in the last segment, Jim, and I'm curious, you as a native Bostonian's, uh, your, your view of this. Um, we were talking a little bit about Belichick. Nathan had mentioned that, that there was some talk that maybe Belichick would call offensive plays in New England. And I, I wondered if he was – we kind of all kind of feel like, obviously, he's kind of chasing trying to win one more without Brady. And if he could hold on maybe a little too long – what, what is kind of your read of, of that situation with him and as he's now approaching 70, I believe, as, as he continues to coach yeah, and chase is, it? Yeah. You know, I, I think that you're right. I think that there is this, um, you know, this ability that he has uh, because he has such a brilliant grasp of the game that you always feel that he's in the laboratory cooking up something. And, um, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, there's no doubt since the exit – of Tom Brady, I always felt that when that would happen, that he would probably stick around and say, hey, listen, I can win one without him, too. And he hasn't been able to do that, though I thought he did a great job last year in maneuvering that team and getting them into the playoffs with a rookie quarterback. Um, so I never put anything past him, but I do watch the way he drafts and some of the moves he's made and the construction of his coaching staff. And I'm not just talking about his sons, but he brings back, you know, he brings back other guys that yep. uh, Joe Judge is back, uh, Matt Patricia is back, and they put them in very, very different roles. And I know it has people back there very concerned, uh, you know, that, that really both of his oars are in the water and going in the right direction right now. But again, uh, Bo, I have to tell you, I would never put anything past him that all of a sudden we could see something new and revolutionary from him where you would say, oh, there it is. There's another brilliant move by Bill Belichick. And speaking of Boston sports, because I think that is going to be interesting to watch later, but right now the Celts in the thick of it, right in the middle. down 2-1. to one. We had the great Game uh, 7 performance. Grant Williams becomes a legend as a career high at any point in his career, career best in that Game 7. They stopped the Heat in Game 2, and you felt like, okay, all right, they're back in it. Tough one in Game 3. How are you feeling right now about the Celts? Well, I think they got to win tonight. Um, yes. And I have to tell you, um, you know, you and I were kind of texting back and forth, and I thought that they had really turned the corner in game two, you know, winning so yeah. decisively down in Miami. And and then the news came out just prior to game three on Saturday that Robert Williams, yep. their big center, was out with knee soreness. Um, but the number that stuck out, Nathan, was the 24 turnovers. My God, that's just unbelievable yep. that they turned the ball over that much. So I think they have to win tonight uh, to get back into it. And then I, you know, I can see the thing going seven again. And, and I wouldn't put it past them, you know, that they could go down there and win in Miami again uh, at some point. Now, whether it's in game five or game seven, it, they're going to have to win in Miami again. Yep. Um, but I don't think that that's a problem for them. I think that sometimes they just get a little bit, too far, too fast out in front of themselves, and I think that happened on Saturday night. So tonight's a big night. Boy, what a great spot to be in, uh, to be in, to be inside that TD Bank Garden because <laughs> that that has been electric when it they has. have been playing. Yeah, it's been. A, Jim, when you were a kid, I'm curious, what was the pecking order in that town? Importance of those well, of those was, big um, pro teams. Yeah, they, and they all had. I mean, they all had an amazing following. Um, I, I would I would have to say, Bo, that the Red Sox 
at that time were 365 days a year, 24-7. Yeah. And sports talk shows came into existence in Boston and maybe nationally at that point, but certainly in Boston. But it was all predicated on the hot stove league. So, in other words, when the Red Sox season was over in October, after they had you know, given up a huge lead and lost to the Yankees again, um, you know, you would, they would go into this radio programming called you know, Sports Talk. It was revolutionary there, too. When I speak of Belichick, I speak of this, too, in our trade. And it was to talk about the Red Sox. Mm-hmm. What are they going to do? What are they going to do tomorrow? What are they going to do? What are they going to do in training camp? So they were always at the top of the heap. The Celtics were kind of a given because they were so great. I mean, people really kind of took them for granted that they were winning championships every year during the Red Hour back, Bill Russell. And my gosh, you could go down the list of all the great teams they had. So I always felt they were kind of taken for granted. It was an incredible hockey town, believe it or not. And it was an incredible Bobby Orr town. (laughs) Bobby Orr came into the Boston Bruins and it was just unbelievable. I mean, it, it was like the Beatles coming and being on the Ed Sullivan show. And it was like that every night. It was, it was a tremendous period. And, and the Patriots were really the sad sacks of, of, the, yeah. of the city. They had no place to play. They were getting kicked around because they, you know, they were at Fenway Park or in the, when they were in the AFL. They ended up at Harvard Stadium for a little bit. Then they didn't want them. Uh, and then they went to Boston College over at Alumni Stadium, which was really tiny. And then they finally built this place out in Foxborough. Now, the one that's there now is a palace compared to the one that they built uh, to finally play out there. But they were really the lowest on the, on the pecking order. As a matter of fact, the Patriots, when Doug Flutie really caught on at Boston College and went on to win the Heisman Trophy, Boston College football – was superior to Patriots football as far as coverage and appeal to the Boston sports fan. Jeez, think about that. It's amazing. Now, now what's happened, Not, you know, in all yes. those years. It's amazing, yeah. Not anymore. Well, look, <laughs> <laughs> it's a wild turn of events certainly there. I actually jotted down, I had, which I was surprised that I was going to – that I had that. You nailed it, yeah. The, I feel like we've discussed Red it before. I knew it was going to be I knew Sox. the Red Sox and then, yeah, and then the – and now you Bruins. talk to guys like Scooney Penn's Boston guy. I've talked to him about it. Yeah. I just think it's fascinating, you know, that the Patriots have kind of gone to the top of that heap. And then it's, you know, kind of everybody's got their – it's such their a great moments. sports town. They all yeah. have their moments. But now it's 365 you know, I'll, I'll tell pass. You guys, I'll tell you guys a story. When I was doing games for NBC, uh, Dick McPherson, the former Syracuse football coach, he had brought in, been brought in to revitalize the Patriots. Uh, and, of course, uh, that was going to be a Herculean task. And they were playing Ron Meyer, Jeff George, and the Indianapolis Colts on a Sunday afternoon in early December in, uh, in Foxborough. And I was doing the game. My partner was Beasley Reese, the former yeah. New York Giants defensive back. And uh, we, we went in on a Friday to do the interviews with the Patriots. And the Patriots PR guy came up and said, we have a pre-sale for the game on Sunday – of 12,000 and we're hoping that it's not too cold we might get a walk-up crowd we could get to 15,000 that would be a good day for us (laughs) that's (laughs) unbelievable unbelievable. that is unbelievable Jim do you remember if you got to in the pre-production means did you get to talk to Jeff George at all and if so did you have a more favorable opinion of him than than Deke Nathan I'll tell you a great (laughs) I'll tell you a great story Uh, (laughs) tell you a great story i did his first game uh in the nfl and i okay. did it with chris collinsworth it was chris, chris collinsworth was my partner it was his first game in the nbc booth and his first game doing television and it was the wow. buffalo bills and they were just coming of age they had just lost that incredible playoff game to the browns the year before where you know clay matthews came up with the interception to save the, the day for the Browns and win the game. But now, you know, the red gun offense or the K gun offense, whatever it was called, uh, was going into existence and the bills were really good. And Jeff George went in to play in his first game and he was starting his first game. It was up in Buffalo and the crowd was wild and they were getting blown out. And we had in the pre-production meeting, he told us where his parents were sitting you know, so that we could get a camera shot of them when they were at the game because it was his first game. 
and he got laid out by Cornelius Bennett and Bruce Smith at the start of the second half, the opening possession of the second half, and didn't see the end of the game uh, because he got knocked out of the game with a concussion. But when, before, when he walked in on Saturday, because the visiting team would always visit with you on Saturday, he, I, you would have thought he was a 10-time Pro Bowler walking in to play his first game. <laughs> and he, I'm telling you, it ended up like the Christians against the Lions that day. Because <laughs> it was unbelievable uh, how great the Bills' defense was and getting ready to be that day. And, and of course, they went on to the Super Bowl that year. Oh, that is fantastic. Poor Jeff, sad. Yeah. Well, the good thing you could do is just pull out the part that he said, here's where my parents will be sitting. <laughs> yes. So, see, he's got a big Hi. heart. Yeah, he's big thinking, heart. And they say he was aloof. Picture. Everybody yeah. said he was aloof. Aloof. Clearly he, is. he was worried about his folks. Wrong. Uh, Jim, pretty predictable, but good to see it finally done. Jadavian Clowney locked in. Um, and, and Nathan and I were talking in the first hour. It kind of feels like uh, in the old Norman Dale line from Hoosiers, our team is on the field though, at this point, right? kind of feels like that might be it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That's a great way to put it. You know, from the day of the last game of the year last year, Cincinnati at home, and when he gave his closing press conference with the media that afternoon and talked about how great it was to play here, uh, I was really, you know, not worried about it, but I was very concerned that, that he, you know, was true to his word because I felt he was a great fit. I think the Browns coaching staff felt he was a great fit. Yeah. I know his teammates thought he was a great fit, and I just didn't want to see time continue to go by where he would get wooed away by somebody else. So it made my day yesterday when that news broke that he had re-signed because I just think it kind of completes that defense right now and a defense that really at the end of the year last year was certainly out playing the Browns offense yes and was playing at a very high level and you can only imagine now going into another year with everybody being around and some additions to the potential of of how that defense might play this year so I'm thrilled that he's back I, I really think it completes them yeah, you're exactly right. You looked at the lineup and you said, okay, we could go out there and play games today. Yep. Now, could you say, do we want to get a, maybe a veteran slot corner in here, somebody who's played that position extensively? Now, I can tell you, talking internally, they feel actually very good about what they have in that cornerback room and the safeties and the versatility that they have. But you could look at that and say, okay, there was something. You could look and say, okay, maybe can we get a, another receiver in here? But the hope internally, once again, is that you know DPJ continues to ascend and that Anthony Schwartz can develop. But the one place that you knew – you probably yeah. still wanted somebody, even after bringing in Winovich and even after drafting Alex Wright, who is admittedly, guys played six years of football, three in high school, three in college. You want to bring him along more slowly, and you could see him as a succession plan to Jadevian Clowney, but you needed Jadevian Clowney back with the Browns. That was the glaring hole in your starting lineup, and now there isn't a glaring hole anymore, and I think it was a massive, massive signing. It was one... You knew it was going to happen, but it's one of those things until it does yeah. happen, you couldn't be comfortable, and here it is. No, you're right, absolutely. And you just, and you know, because of his path in the NFL, Nathan, there have been times where maybe a team that he had played with the prior year had thought, well, we'll get him back. And then it yeah. didn't happen uh, because he's always been considered to be a guy that might go to the highest bidder. And, you know, and yet I think maybe. I mean, maybe we were the highest bidder in this situation, and good for him if we were. But I think also football-wise, I think he probably looked at this situation and said, you know what, I had a really good year last year, and I had a healthy year last year, and I like this idea yeah. of playing in this defense, especially with the guy on the other side of the line that's teaming up with me, because that is a very special duo that just got better and better as the year went along. The more that they got to know – each one of their playing styles and how they they had to fit with each other jim we have otas starting here tomorrow uh what, what are you most looking forward to is then and then obviously the, we're expecting the whole team to be here uh everyone was in the like the offense was in the bahamas with deshaun over the weekend and then everybody here tomorrow and then all leading towards mini camp in the middle of june you know bo i think that the fun thing is that we have a lot of young players that uh are really good players but they're about ready on the forecast of when you're at the level of talent that they are at, that they are about ready to probably take a very, very sizable jump and become really great players. And that's the fun thing to watch. So, and, and, and we have a core of young players who probably fall into that category. I mean, you take a look at Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa, yep. 
who played probably a lot last year on natural ability and instinct. But now he's been educated a, little, a lot more. He probably understands the NFL game and this defense more. And now you marry that with what he's got physically. And, oh, boy, you could have a very, very special player. I mean, we saw it really more than just flashes, but great, brilliant plays by him athletically last year. The same is true for Greg Newsom. You have to look at Delpit the yep. same way because he lost his rookie year. Uh, you, you hope that Jed Wills takes uh, probably is forecasting hopefully good health. But, you know, as far as learning the craft of being a left tackle and being a great left tackle, he probably should take a bump up too. So I think that's the fun thing. I mean, then the other fun thing is when you hear all these rookies and when they get drafted, they talk about how great it's going to be to play alongside Miles Garrett or, you know, the kid from Purdue talks about getting a text message from Deshaun Watson. But when they finally get out of the field and play with these guys, there has to be a wow factor to that. Yeah, and you're right. And I think it's – it's you know, we're trending towards the mandatory minicamp. Remember, these OTAs are voluntary, right. and you hope to have everybody out there. We'll see. But, yeah, I, I'm curious, you know, defensively, you mentioned that trio of guys who are really second-year players. When you think about the talent right. of Newsom, Wusu koromoa and Grant Delpit, that has a chance to really take this defense, I think, to another level this season now that we've settled some things up front. I'm curious to get a look at Taven Bryan, the former first-rounder, and just take a look yeah. at how that defensive tackle room is going to shake out. And then offensively, you mentioned Bell. Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, I'm going to have a lot of eyes on Anthony Schwartz. Can he become yeah, right. a factor here? And then there's the Chief, and I don't know when we'll see the Chief here, but when we do, I think he is going to have to be a huge part of what the Browns do on offense. So there's a, there are a lot of fun storylines, I think, on both sides of the ball, but most of them are about opportunity and progression, which should be exciting for fans and obviously for you when we're able to be out here at the Media Availability Day on Wednesday. Yeah, I think so. And, and, you know, you bring up a good point about Njoku because, really, by what the Browns did with him, there was a declaration by them of, hey, listen, you, you know, you're a pretty special talent. Um, you know, and we've, you know, we'd love to get a long-term deal done with you, but we're going to tag you right now. So the declaration was, you're the guy. And by the other, on the other end of the spectrum about the guy that isn't here anymore and Hooper, you know, that he isn't here. So that, you know, this is a great opportunity. We've been kind of waiting for this with David and Joku because yep. when I talk about flashes of greatness, I mean, he certainly does. I mean, you know, I mean, he has got some very, very unique physical qualities to his game that a lot of tight ends don't have. But the great tight ends now in the NFL probably share that with him. And, and you know, it's time for him to do that. So this, this sets up as a declaration year for him because yeah. I think the Browns declared him as, hey, listen, you're going to be a big part of this. We want you to be a part of it long term, but uh, let's go. Let's get this thing going with you. Yeah, I think that's going to be exciting to see his progression. I think he has an opportunity to be a real force at that tight end position and excited to see that get to work. All right, we know that's coming Wednesday. Week one of the OTAs begin tomorrow here, but the media availability on Wednesday. But tonight, this is my question. Take us in to the Donovan viewing experience. What's your setup? Do you have a special seat? Do you have a special beverage as you get yourself ready for a huge Celtics game? Well, I have to be a good boy because I'm inside the Channel 3 newsroom. So I okay. <laughs> so you got to keep it on the up and up. Okay. <laughs> it's not a typical Celtic, uh, you know, game four must-win situation that it would be <laughs> if I were residing on the, on the farm here in Hinkley. So there is some decorum to it, but I think most of the newsroom will probably be well advised to stay away from the sports department for those hours that it will take to try and get past the Miami Heat tonight. <laughs> but I have to tell you, on normally, like on Saturday night, there, sure. there is a chair there, Nathan, a, and a favorite seat, but I'm not in it because I'm pacing. You know, I really am. I'm pacing. Yeah, <laughs> I love Especially it. Especially as they were turning that ball over Saturday. <laughs> Stop doing it. it. Yeah, didn't go. <laughs> all right, buddy. Good catching up with yes, you. Yes, All the best to the ponies. We'll talk to you soon, Jim. Absolutely. Take care, guys. All right, he's the best. The voice the of the Browns, the great Jim Donovan. Uh, I always, when I was in television news, I always felt that way, too. Like, we, every department, every newsroom I was in, the sports department was separated from the rest of the newsroom and it was like this is where all the fun is yeah and any time that i would see them start like out of the corner of my eye I see news people coming in you'd always get a little anxious like why don't nah not in here this is our safe space keep, it's like you and i in yeah, here keep your breaking news out there we right don't, 
We don't need to deal with this. This is why we're insulated there. in here. We're, we're in insulated. here. We're <laughs> right. In in our the fish bowl. They can see us. It ought to be. Yeah. Right. It's the way it ought to be. Uh, all right. We got a little higher lower coming up here shortly. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Are you a business operation suffering from internal communication breakdowns? Bo here for my friends at EOX Vantage. They're data scientists, but also business operations experts. And your EOX Vantage team can help you build a streamlined communication system. Brings together your email, your chat, your intranet, announcements, CRM. It's one clear flow by the time they're done. And your people, including those who, remo who work remotely, gain a centralized hub that encourages collaboration. There's no more disconnected communication methods that leave team members out of the loop or not on the same page. So it's real, everyday business problems that are solved with EOX Vantage. And you can see how other business owners are getting everyone on the same page by visiting eoxvantage.com. Have we talked since, uh, did you watch, did you finish up Ozark? I most certainly did. Yeah. I don't want to do the spoiler thing. Um, but At just wait, it's not a spoiler. No, I don't think that's fair because I just finished it up this weekend. Like okay. it's, you know, everyone's got their own, which I think is in the end is the biggest flaw of the show, because if it was released weekly, yes, you could have hashed things out. Yes. And when you drop them all, I mean, there were pe people that probably finished four a month ago. People finished the, yeah, because it, first it dropped in, in April. People watched the last six episodes yep. and that was it. And you're done. Yep. Um, we had a bunch of stuff that stacked. And so I didn't get a chance to. So we finally watched it uh, over the weekend. And um, I, so I do think it's, it's probably the best example of a show that the binge model failed it because it didn't, it felt like it just happened and there was no moment to it because you consumed it at all these different times. Everybody consumed it Where differently. Where if it was Succession or any of these other shows, yeah, you have happens. a week to build. And, and everybody watches it. And everybody watches it together, together on that time. And you talk about and it. And dominate social, right. Right. And instead they, they missed that. So, and then I, the other thing I thought, like some of it was absolutely incoherent, the logistical stuff that they were trying to navigate like in terms of everyone's got to deal with the fbi you get a deal you get a deal you get a deal then we got to go to here and it was all just seemed like nonsense um but regardless of all that and not to give away any spoilers i do think that bateman lenny and garner were so good so good those three were so good that it almost the plot or the mechanism of it didn't really matter because they were so much fun to watch yes i would agree with that i would agree with that because there's right so much happens that it would be hard to reconcile all of those things happening and being able to happen. Yes, logistically, it's impossible. Of <laughs> like what were what was going on? But to your point, but yeah. they are so good. And and I would even suggest I would say that Jonah was incredible, especially as he aged. As he aged, Jonah was great this season. Um, the grandfather was great. He came Strong in and, and yeah. brought just a whole dynamic, and he was in the um, Americans. Yeah, he cert most certainly was, um, and I, I thought I I was very satisfied by it. I wanted perhaps a slightly different take on the outcome, but then when you re what the message that they were delivering was, it made a lot of sense. And obviously, you know, yeah, but I you're going to lose some people that you you didn't want to lose. Sure, yeah, yeah, but I think in the end, regardless of it, like whatever whatever the mechanism was. Those performances were Amazing. pretty otherworldly. Those Amazing. three performances. Lenny was unbelievable the last two seasons. This was it, what, season three and four. She's, she's an all-time villain in my mind. She may very well be, but she was so formidable. Oh, yeah, she's quite formidable. <laughs> I mean, just – and in that role, just crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. Garner crushed it, and Bateman crushed it. They all did. It was great. I think I could say this without being a spoiler, but at the time when somebody was going to have to go in and run things, I was actually surprised that she was not the one. I could have, I would have enjoyed seeing those scenes where she was the one who was like, no, I'm running everything now. Yeah, but she was always the blunt instrument. She wasn't the, you know. But that would have been an interesting thing to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, Gibby? Good. How are you guys? Oh, real well. Real well. A little higher or lower, presented sure. by the Ohio Lottery. It's a Monday edition. We're like we did a Friday last week. Hey, <laughs> safe. I feel no like we, we couldn't let this sit till Thursday. All right. All right. Zigar, you were raising your finger. Well, I just came across something that I thought was incredibly interesting, but I'll save it for since you'd, you'd already gotten in there. No, you what were, do you got? You were ready to go. So with Justin Thomas having won this, uh, just having won the PGA, it's the first time since 2018 U.S. Open through 2019 Masters that the top 10 of the world golf rankings held all five titles. So everybody who is a ch current Masters champion is a top five in the world, a top 10 in the world. It's the first time since 2000 and 2001 that the top five of the world golf rankings held all five titles. The only thing about that time was 
it was Tiger Woods it's who one held dude. them all. I it's was going to say, dude. you could say that that's not a good thing for golf right now. That there no, are it's five not. Different people. It's not. Did you? Did you? What did you? How much of it did you watch before we hire a lower? I, I literally turned it on on the as he teed off on the 18th. So we're all there. Six I got, o'clock. We found it. I got. Yeah. I got a little got a bunch update of that said it was coming down to the wire, yeah. and I'm like, hey, you know what? I should turn this on. I didn't really like it's even as big Friday a fail when I was as here. it can be. Huge, massive. Agreed. Now, that being said, during COVID, it made sense. Yeah, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't anymore. Yeah, so just to just say we blew it. We blew it. Let's. It's fine. We tried it. It didn't work. Like they're going. And by the way, like fifty-seven degrees in Tulsa over the weekend. No thanks, man. Like so next next year they're what at Oak Oak Hill, right? Yep. In on Long Island. Yep. Or is that Rochester? New York either, somewhere. Either way. Either way. Who knows what you could be dealing with from a weather standpoint? You could have eighty-five. You could have what we had this weekend, eighty-six and sixty. You could have both. I don't know. I and the other thing they got to do, and we talked about this a um, couple. I think it was last summer when they sh- had that event at Moonlight Basin in Montana. Open this thing up, man. I don't. I don't need to see any more of these same courses. I don't. I agree. I've seen Southern Hills a lot. I've seen Oakmont a lot. I've seen these courses a lot. Like open it up to something we haven't seen before. I think it would be great. And honestly, have have a little fun. Have a little fun. Have Agreed. a little fun. Play some place we haven't. Allow them to hit a try to hit a seven hundred yard drive, like that hole in Montana. Allow go play there. Yes. Have a, let's live a little, baby. Yeah, it's the same places over and over. It's like being Peepaw, who exists in a world where higher is lower and lower is higher. He just tweeted that out. Peepaw's good. He's on it. I want to know who this guy. I want to know Peepaw. I, I want to meet know him. Who it is. I think we do too. We are presented by our great friends at the Ohio Lottery. It is higher or lower, and today it is featuring Peter King's Football Morning in America 2022 NFL Power Rankings. This is interesting because he normally doesn't do this until, I, I want to say, like the start of the season or right before training camp. This is a little early for him, but uh, – Peter King is officially out with his power rankings. We will discuss them. First and foremost, he has the Browns at number 18. Um, obviously, it, it all hinges on Deshaun Watson. If Deshaun Watson would play 16 or 17 games, he says, give me the Browns at 11 and 6. If you told me you play 10 or 11, I'd say 9 and 8. Longer than that, a majority of Jacoby Brissett back team probably goes 7 and 10 ish. I, 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 do we? I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to, again, and these rankings don't matter right now for us. No. They don't matter in the season. They don't I mean, matter for anybody. This is college football. So, of I mean, course. But yeah. I think the, yeah. Go ahead. But for us you in particular, first. it's. Because there is that unknown, and, and he says it right. Look, the Browns have one of the best rosters, 2-53. to 53. That was supplemented with the re-signing of Clowney, but it's all about the one, and the one in this case leaves question marks everywhere for now. And that's why I think we all hope, and my hope is, that there is a resolution to this very quickly, and we can then move forward with that. I know we've got um, you know the real sports tomorrow night. Rusty Harden, Deshaun Watson's lawyer, was just on a podcast and laid out a lot of things, things that I had never heard before as well, clearly uh, from his through his lens, sure. his point of view uh, on the side of Deshaun Watson. I- I'm ready for this, obviously, to be over and for the resolution to come. Yeah, but there's two, two different resolutions, right? And yes. that's what makes it so complicated because you right. could get an NFL resolution. I saw Albert Breer reporting this morning. He reported that this could happen between – that he expects this before the start of the season. Well, yeah, I would think we all expect it yes. before the f- start of the season. That seems pretty clear. There should be a sense of urgency. But I would also say that if – as in the press conference here, Deshaun Watson, his innocence, and is going to fight all of this. So there is no timetable on that. There's no timetable on that. And so no. you, you got to get – so there's two different timelines that are being run here. And I'm guessing the NFL is having a hard time figuring out what they're supposed to do when there's still civil litigation. If anything. Right. If anything. So that's – it's – good luck. Anytime, so anytime I see us ranked in one of these – Boy, who knows? And I think that's the approach a lot of these people take. They put it in the middle when in the reality is I, I think yeah. you rank based on the information today. And the information today is that Deshaun Watson is playing 
right. and is the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, and thus the Browns should be in the top eight in any power ranking, period. I mean, he's it, some of the we'll get. Oh, I don't want to step yeah. on anything, but some of these are pretty wild. I think. Yep. Yeah. All right, and we will start from the beginning and work our way into those AFC North teams and everyone else in football. Next, higher or lower? All right, number one in Peter King's power ranking: Buffalo. The Bills obviously seem to be the darlings for everyone. It takes us to number two, an interesting one. For one, Peter King, he's got the Los Angeles Chargers <laughs> at number two in his power rankings. Zagura, higher, lower, or just right? I'll tell you what, I like it. I think it is. I, look, the defending Super Bowl champions need to be somewhere represented, and they're not in, at, at the top of this. But I love this Chargers team. I'm a big Justin Herbert guy. I think he's a stud. You get Khalil Mack, so now you have Mack and Bosa. Then you go out and you bring in J.C. Jackson who you get to pair with Asante Samuel Jr. This this feels like a defense that got significantly better. The two most important positions, it's an offense that's going to run it back. They get Mike Williams back. I think they're pretty darn good. And in their um, – they've got some pretty easy – their schedule's not terrible either, by the way. Um, I liked. I'll tell you what. I, I like this team. I, I think it's fine. I think they're just right. I think they might be sweet spot. Z- Bo Bishop. No, 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 no. Yeah. They, they, they're lower, or worser, and I can like them a lot for the same reasons you do. It's just Peter does this. He's done this with teams. Like he'll pick a darling that he'll prop up in the off season. And I mean, the old days when the, when being on the cover of Sports Illustrated would matter, he, you'd pick him to win the Super Bowl because it was something that created a lot of buzz for the magazine. And, and this is a this is a very, very talented football team. It's very, very talented. They also were 9-8 and eight a year ago, and they are ahead of teams like Kansas City, who has been better than them recently. Uh, to me, I have, I have the Chargers in a very similar boat with Denver. I think they're very similar teams. Both have a really high ceiling. You just got to do it out on the field. I don't know if I trust the coaching with L.A. that much. I thought that sometimes they were just – almost belligerent with their approach to, to not them punting. The game against us. Well, they went 9-8 and eight and missed the playoffs with a lot but of talent. But they didn't have – their defense didn't have a lot of talent. No, he's calling it. Yeah, he's J.C. Supposed Jackson to be the guru and Khalil Mack to that defense. They I know. I, there's no way I have him ahead of the Chargers. There's no way – I'm sorry, the Rams. There's no way I have him ahead of Kansas City. I don't have him ahead of the Bucks. Um, but I have him in the top ten for sure. This is just too much. You don't go from 9-8 and eight to the second-best like team in football. Next. Higher or lower? Not week five, you don't. The Kansas City Chiefs are number three, and it takes us to number four in the defending Super Bowl champs. Obviously, Bo has his opinion on this, but the Los Angeles Rams. Number four. Bishop, higher, lower, just right. How high up would you put them? Well, I mean, I, I, all I said is they need to be, it, it, that was more of a reflection of, I think, them overranking the Chargers than it was how good I think the Rams are. Rams have suffered some losses for sure. Receiver's going to be interesting how they fill that out. Um, Allen Robinson. They still have a lot of the things there that you like, but at the same time, you know, to me, they're probably the class of the NFC. Like, I think he's got Green Bay a little too high on this. Agreed. Um, but I think Tampa Bay ought to be closer. Yeah. It's not so much that I think the Rams are some super team. I just think that he's got the Chargers overvalued. Zagura? I like – look, this NFL, as we've talked about, there are a lot of teams that legitimately feel like Super Bowl contenders, and there's a lot of parity amongst those teams. The Rams, losing Von Miller, that's a loss for them. Odell played great for them. Can Allen Robinson replace that? Now, they've also lost Robert Woods. Now, he wasn't there for the Super Bowl run, but Robert Woods had been a big part of what they did on offense. Green Bay is a team that I think losing Devontae Adams is massive. I mean, they don't – who is their go-to receiver? Is it going to be Christian Watson? Guy averaged two yard, two catches a game at North Dakota State. Is he all of a sudden going to be a right. superstar right away in the NFL? Maybe. He's got a quarterback can do it. I think the Bucks are still the best team top to bottom in the NFC. Now, they had some losses on the offensive line. We'll see how that impacts them. But you still have Mike Evans. You still have Chris Godwin. I just think this is a very – it's a very different conference right now. All of those teams got a little bit worse than they were the year before. Yeah, they all did, really. All of them did. There's not one that's better than they were last year. This no. Year. Not one. No, and I think that's a very interesting scenario, whereas everybody it feels like in the AFC got better, which is why I have, and I, I'm sure it is ambitious, but I have no problem with the Chargers being put where they are on paper. Will they deliver? I, that's what we're going to find out. But I like the moves that they have made, and I like that team. Next. 
Higher or lower? We roll on in the top 10. Green Bay, number five. Tampa Bay, number six. I'm going to kind of lump both of these in together here. Uh, and you guys tell me which one should be higher, lower, or just right. Number seven, Cincinnati. And number eight, the Ratbirds from Baltimore. Baltimore, fit number eight. Zagura, higher, lower, or just right for either one of these two? I like their draft. They are going to get healthy. This was a team that almost made the playoffs last year despite being without their starting running backs, without their starting corners, without their quarterback for a, a large portion of the season. That's crazy. Those guys, and, and not only that, Ronnie Stanley, their left tackle. Jackson, Stanley, Humphrey, and Peters, those four guys missed 42 out of a possible 68 games last year. They're all back. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are back. They had an excellent draft. They still have a, a stud tight end in Mark Andrews. But there is something going on in my mind, just me, maybe it's and maybe it's completely unfounded with Lamar Jackson, with Greg Roman, with this That's offense, weird. with receivers not wanting to play there, even though they're good friends of the quarterback, with receivers not wanting to come there to play with the quarterback, that it feels like they're at a crossroads. And so they're a team on paper that absolutely could be this good, but they're also a team that could be, I think could have just a total collapse. Bishop? Yeah, I think it's a little high for Baltimore because even even as you were as you were starting your explanation, the first thing you said is they're going to get healthy. We well, don't know that. We sure. you don't know. I mean, who knows with Deshaun if he'd be able, you know, or not Deshaun Lamar. Who knows what what that'll look like over the course of a season? And does that stuff start to stack? I think the one that. So let's take Cincinnati. Cincinnati represents the AFC in the Super yes. Bowl. They got a lot of uh, everything that could go their way did in the postseason, but they also didn't rest on their laurels. They addressed their entire team needs before they drafted, which means they could draft for strength. They're going to get the Jesse Bates thing sorted out. Burrow's an absolute gamer. Their offense now is going to be able to protect him with three offensive linemen that they signed, including Al Collins, yep. Alex Kappa, Ted Karras. Like, to me, Cincinnati is better than the Chargers. They're a better team. They've accomplished more, and they bring everybody back. I understand what the Chargers brought in was pretty flashy, but Cincinnati's done it, and Burrow's done it. Did the, Chargers, so, did the Chargers beat them last year, or am I making that my head? I think the Chargers stomping. did beat them. It was one way or the other, but it was a beating. I feel like the Char – I can't remember. But they beat the Chiefs twice in games of great consequence at the Bengals. Yeah. I mean, they they you know they were actually in the Super Bowl and were within yeah. a drive of being able to make it really interesting. That thing crumbled. We forget, like, that thing crumbled, like, in a second. It oh, went like yeah. It went from, like, holy hell, Burrow's going to go win the Super Bowl or at least get a field goal to, wait, it's over? Yeah. What happened? Confetti fell and it's over. Um, so, to me, Cincinnati would be a little bit higher on this and probably deserves a little more respect. December 5th, 2021, yeah. Chargers at Bengals, 41-22. Chargers, both teams at 7-5 and five at that moment. And that, that was the change. You would have thought it could have gone the other way for Cincinnati. Absolutely. Instead, it went the it other went way. It went the other way. Yeah. And Burrow, did you see recently on that podcast? Where and the did. same probably must have happened to the Chargers. So they went in the tank. They went two but of their they, last five. And they played five. great, but they lost that heartbreaker. I mean, Herbert couldn't have played better, much like Josh yeah. Allen against the Bills when they lose to the Raiders in overtime. Um, but Burrow was talking. they lose to down the stretch, the Chargers? To lose, if they, got, if they were. Burrow was saying in the. Um, they lose to the Chiefs at the end of the game on a Monday night. Wasn't it a big Monday night game, Kelsey, in overtime? Some tough, like that would be a tough 17 loss, right? or 16. So they beat. They oh, here beat, you go. They lost to the Chiefs. They yep. lost to the Texans. In overtime. They lost horrible at Houston. Loss. My God. Whooped the Broncos. And, and then, then they lost lose to in the Raiders. overtime. The Raiders. So it's two overtime games. And if they, they beat lost, the Raiders. Two weeks before that, they lost to Denver. Now, they have bad losses. No, they smoked Denver. They lost to the Texans. No, no, no. They lost to Denver two weeks before they beat the bank. The week before they yes. beat the Bengals, they lost to Denver to go to 6-5. They lost to bad teams. Yeah. That's horrible. strange. That's weird. Next. Higher or lower? I, I have no idea why, but he's got Philly at number nine. <clears throat> Takes us know, to number is, 10. I don't, I don't get no, that. No, that's stay there for people, a second. I don't know why people are falling in I love don't understand with that this. football team. I feel like you're not watching. I feels like it almost you know what it feels like? It feels like this like a kid who can't tell the difference between fantasy football and real football. That's what I think the Eagles are. Like, people think Hurts is good because he's a good fantasy guy. But they're, it's it's limited. Okay, you got A.J. Brown, you got Devontae Smith, you've got, you know, Dallas Goddard. You've got talent. It is a pretty good defense, right? You get James Bradbury coming in. But here's the thing for me. If you're 
I think, and you tell me if you think I'm right or if you think I disagree, I think Miami has a quarterback question mark similar to that of of Philly, and I think they have a better roster, and he has them at 16. Al- agreed, and Alabama would have said that the better thrower was the guy in Miami because they Correct. had him quarterback it instead of the guy Correct. who's quarterbacking Philly. Yeah. Correct. So, yes, I would agree. Yeah. Number nine is it. Philly, and, and number 10 is San Francisco. I, it's interesting because everything Peter King wrote about us, about the biggest – where I th- kind of feel that way about the 49ers. Yep. Like, if Debo's happy and if Garoppolo stays there, or if Lance is who they drafted him to be, well, then I think San Francisco could be really, really good. Really, really good. But I don't know if Lance can be what they drafted him to be yet, and I don't know what they're going to do with Garoppolo. But if they do those things, then I think they can be one of the best teams. They could. Would it shock me if San Francisco's in the Super Bowl? Of course no. not. Not at all. All right. Final one. It would shock me if Philly was in the Super Bowl. That I'll would that. shock me. Honestly, I feel that way about Dallas, too. I don't see any scenario on Dallas. feels like their window closed. Final one, Nick. Higher or lower? This is the one that it, I really stood out to me, and I feel like people are starting to fall in love, and I'm not sure if you're there yet. He's got the Detroit Lions at number 20. Three thirteen and one. He's got and them ahead of the Colts. He's got them ahead of the Colts, the Pukers, so he's got Arizona. The he's got the Colts way too low. He's got Pittsburgh too low. With just they just haven't had losing seasons. I don't love them, but I think they could fall off. But he's got Indy way too low on this thing. He's got he's got the he's got Philly six spots ahead of Dallas. He's got Denver fourteen, mind you. See, and that's fourteen, I, and they got Russell I would Wilson. Have, I would have at least flipped Baltimore and Denver there. <laughs> I mean, I, up. I don't understand that. So, but yeah, I, my guess is what he's thinking in with Detroit. First of all, he loves the people running Detroit right now. Yes. Yeah. Loves yes. them. Correct. All those people he yes. loves. So that's part of it. Yes. Um, the other thing is, is that division not great. And they may have the worst team in football or one of them in Chicago. But no, lower. <sighs> clearly. Yeah. Don't think we're there yet. All right, that's a look at Peter King's power rankings. I think it might be the final power ranking. Of it's a good job out of him, though, because we talked about it, and we yes. would have done – We do it. so he, you got He got made it talking. newsy. Hey, he only he does it once a year. It. He did it, yeah. I mean, or he did it maybe twice might, a year, I yeah, think. I think yeah, he does it twice. But that's – you know, he got you talking about it. So much more to come. Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.
You watching the hoops tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Be Absolutely. Fun. I, I enjoy watching those. And the Celtics, I think that's a good series. The Warriors obviously look like they're in control. And Luka it just doesn't Needs have help. enough with them. He's like LeBron in 07. Yeah. Like, you got to have some. He's good. Some help. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I don't think people realize how big he is. Yeah. I mean, he's so physical. Yeah. He's, yeah. It's fun. It's been good. All right. Absolutely. Next level coming up next. We're back tomorrow. Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.